All right, guys, so I wanted to talk to you all about the film score to King Kong. The film score was written by a guy named Max Steiner, which you can see the, the slides on before. Um, he's going to become very famous in the world of movie music because he's going to write music specifically for the films themselves. Um, this is going to help the films take on certain characters and emotions that are going to help people really feel um, the, the emotions trying to be displayed within the film, okay? Especially for King Kong. When we think about King Kong, we're thinking about this island-dwelling ape who can't communicate his feelings to us like we can communicate to each other. Okay, um, in Dracula, all of the people there could talk about how they thought about Dracula and even Dracula could express what he was trying to do. Right. Um, and there was no music behind it because we could hear them. But now for the first time, the music is supposed to basically convey to us what can't be said. Okay, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth in a bit. But if you look on this slide here, it says Kong illustrates all of the features that were to remain typical, both of Steiner's dramatic scoring in particular and the golden age narrative of music. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. Um, Steiner's dramatic scoring is going to refer to the fact that a lot of his music is going to sound exactly that dramatic. OK, he's going to have an orchestra that's going to play all these different colors right from their instruments. They're going to emit all these different emotions and it's going to really help everybody feel what's being conveyed in the movie. The Golden Age narrative is talking about this period of time in Hollywood in which all of these movies were being churned out that would become Hollywood classics. If you have grandparents that like to watch the channel Turner classic movies, then they've probably seen many of these staple movies, okay? Or maybe like 100 movies you must see before you die. King Kong is one of them, all right? It's why it's been selected for preservation from the National Film Registry and the Library of Congress because it's culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant. And it's part of this golden age idea, this, this really dramatic, um, you know, wealthy time in Hollywood, okay? The main title itself, or the main music itself, is going to present two contrasting idioms. In that case, for music means two ideas. They could be full melodies, or they could be shorter fragments of music. One is supposed to be aggressive, representing the monster, Kong himself, and the other is going to be romantic, the object of his affection. He's going to be falling for the woman, Anne Darrow, who, despite the fact that he's an ape and she's a human, he's going to fall in love with her anyway. OK, eventually, as Kong is forced to part from his love, the two themes are going to merge into one. And I'm going to ask that you be a good listener and see if you can detect when in the film that happens. Hint, it's going to be at the end. OK, here the music is required, perhaps for the first time in an American film to explain to the audience what is actually happening on the screen, since the camera is unable to articulate Kong's instinctive feelings of tenderness towards his helpless victim. So Kong, again, is not able to tell people that he doesn't want to hurt Anne, but I'm sure he's frustrated because people think that he's this terrible creature. And in reality, he has some emotions that, again, you'll hear through music. So let's take a look. The first little bit of music that you're going to hear is this jungle island music. OK, they have to go to Skull Island or Skull Mountain to be able to see Kong. And it's going to be very um, dramatic and exciting because there's going to be a tribe there that's going to be performing rituals and dancing. And you're going to hear music that sounds like this. I'll play it for you now. And you'll hear that at the beginning. See if you can detect that theme as it happens. Um, it's going to be very fast paced. And that's why it's called Jungle Dance Le Motif. OK, now we're going to go on to Kong's theme, OK, which is going to be very beautiful, sorry, brutal and aggressive. Here we go. So you're going to hear this multiple times throughout the movie. And it could sound really punching. Maybe it could be sound uh, sound a little bit slower than that. Or even more aggressive. OK, um, when you go to Anne's theme here, it's going to be a lot more luscious. It's going to be romantic, hence to represent Anne or the love interest. And I'll play that for you now. Or you could also hear this other love theme that sounds like this. And I'm going to play that one for you one more time, a little bit slower, so you can really hear it. And you'll hear. 
hear that throughout as well. Okay, so when you're watching the movie, see if you can keep an eye on these different um, or an ear out for these different melodies so that you can hear what's being conveyed that can't necessarily be said. Okay, these love themes are going to help tell you what's going on before it happens. The Kong theme is going to tell you, you know, when people are running around, they're obviously afraid of Kong or that he's approaching. Okay. Um, when you get back to the idea that Kong is being brought to New York, because we know the very famous scene in which he climbs the Empire State Building, you're going to hear other music, other really exciting music. Okay. And finally, there's going to be two times in which you hear no music at all. I'm going to ask that you listen for those as well and you can kind of comment where they happen and we'll certainly talk about that when we meet face to face okay um, as far as max steiner goes he has a pretty big legacy um, he's made so many different movies and and the music to them has become very iconic it's like before john williams there was max steiner so i'll post um, his whole entire catalog of movies that you can see online and perhaps you'll watch one of them and be able to compare the music or perhaps you know your parents or your grandparents will reference a movie that he's done and you'll have some knowledge about that music OK, but I hope that um, you'll be able to watch the film King Kong and be able to listen for these little bits as it happens. OK. All right. Good luck.